So that's our, that's our, intro so officially we are starting yes some people will say ah but it's not yet three o'clock i agree with you so let's get started and um, they will they will join us they will join us where they meet us so i want to say that um today class promises to be quite interactive as usual because we are, we are going uh, to uh, discuss what I call the big five. Yes, you may be saying, ah, what is she talking about? What is this big five? Ah, yes, I call them the big five because that is the fundamental of, of learning. The fundamental of, uh, the fundamentals of learning that is what I call it. That's how I describe it. That's how I see it. There are four of them. The other one is not part of uh, the language the skill that we will get to know. And uh, you will be wondering, what is she talking about? Yes, I'm talking about the study skills for the distance learner. What are these skills? And what, are, what am I calling the big four? The big four, when it comes to study skills, part of, or uh, I call them also, they also belong to communication family. Listening, speaking, reading, and writing. These four, sometimes I'm tempted to call them the quadruplets. You cannot, you cannot say you are listening without somebody speaking. It's impossible. I'm speaking now. You. We will get over it. <clears throat> I had already started before the network challenge. I, I want to welcome those of you that are just joining us. 
But I said that we are considering today what I call the big four. And um, what are those big four? The big four are uh, speaking, reading, and writing. You might be wondering why I call them the big four. They are big four because as far as communication is concerned and language skills is concerned, those four, they go hand in hand. Sometimes I'm tempted to call them the quadruplets because they complement each other, especially listening and speaking. For instance, I am speaking now and you are listening. When we get to class activity, I will, you will have the floor, you will be speaking, then I will be listening. So that's how they complement themselves. Then as a student, you cannot do without listening and you cannot do without speaking. For instance, how? It is not only, uh, we, didn't, we didn't wait to get to this level before we started to listen and started to speak. No, we started that long ago from our homes while we were growing up. We listened to our parents, listen to our siblings while they talk. We listen to our friends while they talk. And so that's how uh, the listening started. And of course, when we eventually get to school, our friends, classmates, we listen, we discuss together with them. And of course, when during the uh, class discussion, when they are talking, we listen. When the lecturer is also uh, teaching, we listen. So listening is part of human, uh, is part of our language skill, whether at home, in school, anywhere is part of it. And so it is very, very key. I, 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 I cannot imagine any student who will learn without listening. Even those that we say that they are physically challenged, they learn by sign language. You will also notice that when their teacher is teaching them using sign language, they, they, they listen. They watch, that is their own. So in, uh, in any way, at any time we are learning, we must listen. And then of course, the same thing with speaking. Speaking, we speak, I'm speaking now. When it gets to your turn, you speak. In class, you are, when, you are, when they ask you a question, you must speak. You cannot just say, okay, they ask me a question, then you give your own sign, except of course, it is a class for maybe a real sign language is uh, used. Otherwise, if you are asked question, like in our class now, when we get to class activity and uh, you, we say, okay, you ask your question, you have to speak so that we can, we can hear you. So the same thing with reading. As a student, you must read. When you read, you jot down, uh, the points, jot down the things uh, that, uh, the points that you are, you are getting. And so that, that takes us to writing. So you can see how they all, they are, they are connected. This is connected to this, they complement each other. And so that is why I tell you that I'm always tempted to call them the country plates. So let's, um, start properly. Uh, let's look at uh, our slide and uh, see what we have there. Right. The study skills, like I said before, you can see it, see the slides. That's the listening, speaking, reading, writing. And the study strategy is not a language skill, but it is the strategy or technique or your own approach, your style that you will 
to adopt after we have finished after our study would have come to understand to appreciate the role they play how they affect or impact your uh, academic success negatively or positively so when you come to understand them appreciate them then you will uh, begin to pay close attention perhaps before now you you took them for granted uh, uh, you, this, you never knew that they have uh, they have any part to play in your day-to-day -day, uh, activity and so look the first one we sometimes we tend to say ah this is a listening we just look at it as if um does it really matter does it really matter but whether you like it or not you are listening even if uh, let me say whether it is you are directly concerned or not you will listen now listening sometimes uh, people say to listen is the first first of the four i hope we are on the same page when i say the first of the four that is the first of uh, when you say listening speaking reading and writing listening is the first why do i say so or why should i believe that it is if we cast our mind back while we're growing up before we begin to mimic mimic our parents or our uh, siblings especially the, the the older ones the ones that are that are senior to us we would have listened they would say, okay, mommy, you listen. You would have heard that word said severally before you begin to mimic it. And so to that, to that extent, listening is the first of the four. And of course, the speaking, you can say, okay, is the second of the four. Because having listened, you will start to mimic. That is how it is. And so they play a major role in our, in our lives. If I say, uh, recall the times or situations where you have listened, you can recall that very easily. You can recall it without even uh, thinking too much about it. You can recall. So listening is very, very uh, key. And uh, you may be wondering, say, ah, very study. There are things that you are expected to, to learn from this study. You should be able to uh, understand the importance of listening as a study skill. You should be able to understand, oh, listening is very, very important as a study skill. It's very important. Then, of course, you should be able to identify the strategy that will enhance your effective listening. There are some strategies uh, that will enhance your listening. You know, sometimes some people don't know that they are not good listeners. They are not good listeners. You are talking to somebody, the person will say, I'm with you, I'm with you. But the person is not listening. So after this study, you will understand the, the, the technique, the strategies that you will adopt that will enhance your effective listening because you must be an effective listener, to be an effective speaker, and of course, to be a successful student, you must listen. It's very, very important. And then, of course, there are different types of listening. At the end of this study, you should be able to uh, know, you should be able to identify uh, or even explain them, different types of listening. And of course, there is something that we tend to mix up, listening and hearing, listening and hearing. There are two different things, though they help in our understanding, but they are, they, they, they are different. At the end of this very study, you should be able to, to know the difference, even though if it's just a thin line, that you should be able to know or distinguish between listening and 
hearing. And again, you should be able to uh, identify factors that may influence or um, that may enhance your effective listening to be able to do that. And of course, you'll be able to demonstrate the scale of listening in acquiring knowledge. You should be able to demonstrate it, not just identifying it, not just uh, mentioning it, not just uh, defining it. You should be able to, because in education, we believe that until a positive change takes place in the attitude of the learner, then learning has not taken place. So until you demonstrate these uh, qualities, we will not say that, oh, listening, uh, learning has not taken place. Now, if you look at this, my slide, you will see this fellow, someone is talking to him. He said, he's showing interest. It's like, he's not hearing the person properly. So he's kind of trying to listen. You will see it. And then of course, <clears throat> When you are listening, when you when somebody is talking, maybe you to ask for clarification. It's not wrong. Say please, I, I didn't understand what you said. It's very important. It shows that you were listening and that you want to understand the person. It is better to ask for clarification than misquoting the person. Then of course you need to show interest. You need to maintain eye contact with the person that is talking, so that the person will know yes, you don't you are you you you, you don't have divided attention. Because when some some people are uh, you are talking to some people, they are doing something else, and they pretend to be listening. Yes, pretending to be listening because they are actually not listening. They are not hearing you. So you must show interest and you must uh, maintain eye contact so that the person will know. Then of course, um, there's what we call a, sometimes some people, when they are talking, they tend to uh, gesticulate. They tend to use their hands to demonstrate like I am doing now. No, they are called nonverbal uh, behavior and communication that are called nonverbal behavior. And so you must observe those nonverbal behaviors. You must pay attention to those nonverbal uh, behaviors. And so that sometimes you even understand the person better, especially if you are staying maybe a dis uh, a, a, some distance away from the, the speaker. Such uh, nonverbal uh, behaviors it helps you to get uh, clearly what the person is, is saying. Um, I, I did say previously that my duty as a facilitator is not to come and read the notes or the, the course materials for you. It is assumed, yes, that you have read it, came prepared, uh, you came with your, your uh, you are here with your question, or rather you come here with your question, fully prepared. And uh, that is why I, I don't want to bore you with too much talk. Let's get to class activities. Please, because of the, because of our class size, uh, if you have any, any contribution, Okay, um, Chibuzo, you're asking when does the class start? Right, you are very, very correct. It starts by three o'clock. It starts by three o'clock. So we started earlier today because a lot of people came. So it's three o'clock, all right? Um, so you have not missed anything. You have not missed much. We're just on the introductory part of it. So you have not missed anything. So because of Chibuzo, let me recap that today we, 
we we started a, a new topic and uh, which I call uh, the big the big five, but the fifth one is not uh, actually part of a language scale, but it is a strategy that will help you to achieve what those four language skills is intended to, to achieve. The strategies, the techniques, the styles, the approach that you need to adopt based on your peculiar nature. Yes, on your peculiar nature because we, we have our individual uh, differences. So the style I will adopt is not the style that you will adopt. When we get to the strategies, you will understand it. So that is what we are looking at. And I christened listening, speaking, reading, writing. I call them the contemplates because they complement each other, especially listening and speaking. You cannot separate these two. Reading and writing, of course, you cannot separate these two. At a point, the four come together and complement each other. You will get to discover that as the discussion uh, goes on. So I'm working on the assumption that we have read at home. We read and we're here with our questions. But before you ask your questions, I want you to, uh, this is class activity, please. If you, you have answer to the questions, you have answer to the question, uh, please send it via chat. Because if I unmute you, know, you people, the platform very noisy. And of course, you won't enjoy it. You won't. So I want to get your answers, your questions, send it through chat. When you send it through chat, I am going to read it. Then I will answer it. For the benefit of you, the questionnaire, and the other members of the class, perhaps you may not be the only one who uh, who would want to hear the answer. So I will want to uh, uh, read it. Uh, the TMA, we will talk about the TMA, uh, not, not, not in the class, not now, not now. There will be time for all those ones, but the questions we are talking about now is, of course, whatever we are going to answer in the TMA, we'll also learn it from here. So why not settle down? Let's discuss before we get to TMA. <laughs> Students are always anxious to do the TMA and submit, which is very good. It's part of your assessment, it's part of your formative assessment. You will also get to know about it when we get to uh, forms of assessment available in ODA. So, this is the class activity. And um, the question there, you can see it on the slide. It says, mention five components of listening. What are these components of listening? Mention for you may not even, even if it's only one, just send it via chat um, so that others can also react and mention. You may even if you may not mention all the five. So let's let's start. What are these components? We'll talk about the components. What are they? What are these components of uh, listening? Or can we say what are these? What are these for uh, uh, for active listening? What are those things that you need to do so that? Uh, you can you can listen effectively. What are those things that you need to do? Those things you need to stop doing 
that can help your effective listening. Yes, I'm already getting uh, listed. Okay. Right, right. Uh, uh, Dorcas Archer, I think I'll call you Archer. You say a component of listening is remembering. Hmm, okay. Mm -hmm. Reacting, you say show interest, responding, uh, rapt attention and concentration, eye contact. Yes, when I'm talking, uh, for instance, if we we are standing close, you know, at a very close uh, range, you know, this is a virtual class. And so when I am talking and you are looking at me, we have eye contact. And we know that you are paying attention. Yes, they are removing distractions. Wow! Didn't I say it that this class, this class, they will they will really make exploits because you 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 feel really prepared. You say remove uh, distraction, anything, any form of distraction, anything at all at all that will distract you, you remove it. Then stop talking and pay attention. Yes. Um, hearing, hearing is hearing is a different edition. He said contribution. No, when somebody is talking, it's not the time to contribute yet. It's not time to contribute. Uh -huh. No, it's not time to contribute. So we're talking about, like, say, maintain eye contact. Yes, pay attention. Yes. Then empathize with the speaker, I think, is one of them. Be alert. Be alert. Then um, when you say uh, jotting down points, Yes, it's, it's also part of it. It's also part of it. Aha, I say attentiveness, focus, noise free environment. I agree with you. That is the reason why this class is uh, you are muted on entry so that it will, be, it will be quiet. Assuming I unmute everybody, the class will be, the, the class will be rowdy. It will be noisy. And of course, the, some of these noises, they may not be deliberate. You may not be the one that is making the noise, but the environment where you are, you cannot control the, 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 the noise. You can't control it, except you are just alone in the house. But if you are not alone in the house, if you are in the office or maybe in your business, in your uh, business uh, uh, premises, there are certain noise that you really cannot control. So um, that is, is very good. Then we also talk about observe nonverbal communication. Yes. And so we go to the next one. You say list by four bar, uh, wow, list four barriers. There is confusion here. Say list three, four barriers. No, it's just four barriers that we're talking about. So I take the free off. All right. List four barriers to effective communication, uh, listening. listening. What, are, what are the things capable of constituting barriers? What are those things? What are those things that can constitute barriers for our effective uh, listening? Hmm. Okay. Distractions from phone and other devices. I agree with you. Then noise, phys physiological barriers. No. What do you mean by physiological barriers? Yes, you are right. But I want you to. I want you to. I want you to uh, expatiate on that physiological barriers because you're not talking about the physical one. Just talk. Uh, explain. Language differences. Semantics. Noise. When the learner is not mentally prepared, hmm, the learner is not mentally prepared, it can actually uh, constitute a barrier. Lack of interest. Yes, lack of interest is a serious barrier. Somebody is talking, you are not interested. The person is just, please, 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 please. Um, please, I'm okay, I'm okay. You are not saying it all, but your attitude will show it. Say distractions, uh, language, emotional barrier. When you say when you say language, uh, 
uh, as a, when you say language, what do you mean? Can you break that down? Language, how is it? You are using ambiguous language because if you say language, this your language is ambiguous. What what is language? How is it affecting or constituting a barrier to listening? Is it that your vocabulary is too high for the uh, the listener? If it is, is it that it's too high? And lack of no, you cannot say lack of inability. You say lack of ability. So you say lack of inability. You are saying is tautology. So physiological barriers, language. If someone speaks a language you cannot understand, uh, language I cannot understand. Are you talking about your your dialect? Like if you are if if you are a Yoruba and I'm I'm Igbo, you are not using Yoruba to talk to me. So that's a, is that the language barrier you're talking about? And of course. If you do that, um, let's let's pause. Let's pause for a while. Let's just pause for a while. We will come back to the questions. Now, the the point that she has raised is a very vital point in communication. When you are before you start before you start speaking, we will go into details when we get to speaking. Before you start speaking. You must find out who your audience are. Who are my audience? Who are they? Literate or illiterate? If they are literate uh, class, what is their level of education? So that you will know at the point that you will come in and the language will begin to speak. You used to speak with them. Language is can be very can be a very serious barrier if you do not select choose your language properly. Assuming maybe there is a village market where I I feel oh things are cheaper there and the vegetables are uh, they are fresh, so I want to go there to buy. So I drive down. First, I must be able to understand. To know the language that they will they will understand, we must communicate. We must understand each other. I cannot get there and begin to speak too high grammar. They will be looking at me. Who is this one? What is wrong with her? Hey, please. Oh, who wants to buy? Should we come? They will just they will just uh, push me aside. Whether I'm going to pay higher or not. Is, is irrelevant because I'm not even communicating in the first place. So that is where language comes uh, comes uh, handy. That's where language becomes an issue. But that is under the topic of speaking. But I just want us to understand it. Yes, it's a valid point that she has raised. It's a very good point that she has raised. If your language, if you are using language that is out of place, of course you're not communicating. If you get to a place, if Pigeon English is their lingua franca, please flow with them. If it is their, um, their local dialect, that is the only way they can communicate. Either you have learned it or you get an interpreter. So it is very, very important. So let's go back to the barriers. Uh, let me see what, all right. He said, if the speaker is too fast, that is the speaker's pace. Hmm. Hmm. So if the speaker is too fast, um, well, it's a barrier, yes, because it means that the person is just talking, uh, running it like that. Uh, no, it, it doesn't care whether people are hearing or not. Or So people are bound to lose interest. That will actually cause people to lose interest. And of course, he said not being the topic. Yes, not being familiar with the topic. If you are not familiar with the topic, there is what we uh, there is what uh, uh, what they, uh, we call lexis and structure. For every trade or for every subject, for everything, they have the language that is best suited for that particular thing. Yes, there could be other 
other similar words that can be used, but there are particular one that is best suited for that particular topic, for that particular topic. So if you are not familiar with the topic, if you are not conversant with it, then you now discover that the way you will explain it, your listener will, will be lost. The, your listener will be lost. Even if the person had the mind, had interest, then it becomes a problem. He said, when the listener is sick or on drugs, wow. Uh, if you say on drugs, do you mean medication? Because that bring this is a proper this is a, a proper example of what I'm talking about. Please, can you uh, explain when you say the person is sick or on drugs? Is it the person is on medication that you mean? Please, can you uh, can you take that again? Mm. He said uh, anxiety, uh, emotional issues. Hmm. Yes. Anxiety can can actually affect uh, our listening uh, ability. He said, not knowledgeable with the topic. That's what somebody has said before. Um, while I'm waiting for you, he said, when the listener is intoxicated, um, is that what you mean by when the person is on drugs? Why I'm saying this is like this, you know, that is the legacy structure we're talking about. Here, we, when we say somebody is on drugs, we mean that the person is sick and the person is, uh, uh, I saw something like hard drugs. Uh, I saw it. So, okay, when somebody is sick, sometimes we say, oh, I have not taken my drugs. It's wrong. I have not taken my medication. Because elsewhere, if you say that I have not taken my drugs, it will mean that you're on hard drugs. You are taking something like cocaine, um, heroin, marijuana, and all that. That is what it is classified as drugs. Not medication, maybe like uh, anti-malaria, uh, multivitamin, or antibiotics. No, those ones are not classified as drugs. They are medication. So that we will use the right word for our own uh, description. Then, of course, he said, when the listener is unstable or under pressure, where that comes under, uh, under anxiety too, yes. When the listener is, is unstable, it's under pressure. Uh, so the, you are talking, the, the person is not there, it's half there, uh, it's absent-minded. Something else is uh, uh, competing with his attention. When the person is on drugs, can we say the person's state of mind, the, the, the person's state of mind uh, is worse. If you no, know, when somebody is on drugs, that is hard drugs, hard drugs like marijuana and other, the person's state of mind cannot be stable. Of course, the person may not even, the person may just be looking at you. It's not even listening at all. So we say the person's state of mind is, is unstable. So repetition of the same word, yes. Repetition of the same word. You keep repeating the same thing. And that happens when the person is not familiar, as the other person said before. The person is not familiar with the topic. The person is, is not conversant with the topic. So you keep repeating the same thing just to while away the time. And then um, he said prejudice. Prejudice, yes. Prejudice, the, the person will say, <laughs> Is it not this? Is it not this? I've, I've heard it before. You don't know what the person wants to say. You just conclude. You just say, mm, it's the same thing. It's not the same thing. Listen, allow the person and before you jump to the conclusion. So, Adeyemo, you are right. Then he said, um, when there is this connection between the speaker and the listener, uh -huh. when there is disconnection, what is it that could cause this disconnection? Lack of interest, uh, the person is not using the right word. What are these things that can cause this uh, disconnection? Uh, Etuma, uh, I want you to, I want you to add flesh to this. You are right, but I want you to add flesh. Assuming this is exam and you answer it like this, uh, the ingredients are not there. Uh, they are not there. Mind wandering. 
mind wandering. That is the one we call absent-minded. Absent-minded. The person is, is the person is seated there. The person is standing, looking at you, but the person is not actually there with you. That's a serious matter. Absent-minded. You are talking. The person is not hearing you, and that is why sometimes you hear some people say, "Ah, hello, are you with me? Hello, are you with me? Are we on the same page? Hello, is you?" So talking like that, the person has observed some level of lack of interest, you know, lost in thought. That is the same thing with, with whether you say lost in thought, mind wandering, or absent minded. We are the same, the same thing. And so uh, I'm glad that uh, we understand this topic listening. We understand it. So we go to the to the to the one I call the twin sister or the twin brother, if you like. Let's look at um, let's look at effective speaker. Speaker, ha. Ah. Who is this speaker? At what point do we call somebody an effective speaker? Speaking is fundamental to let me say human communication. Human communication. You cannot talk about communication without talking about speaking. Yes, even though you will say, okay, nonverbal communication, you may add it. But whenever you hear communication, the first thing that comes to mind is verbal communication. Like I am talking now, I'm speaking, you are hearing me. It's fundamental. And like, um, if I ask you people now, if I if I meet you now and say, okay, let's interact, everybody will be talking, will be speaking. So speaking is very, very fundamental in human communication. You cannot remove speaking from communication. It's a, it's a daily activity that we take for granted, daily. For instance, waking up in the morning, you could say, oh, good morning. Oh, how was your night? Did you sleep well? We are communicating. But we take it for granted. Say, ah, it's a normal up in the morning. I say, oh, good morning. Oh, say, guy, how are you? You know, you kind of take it for granted. But it is very, very fundamental. Now, oftentimes, you know, uh, we speak much, we speak more than we read and we write. You will agree with me. If we are to put, we are to put the, uh, the let me say, the volume of our words, if we, are, if we are to put the things we say, we were to write them. Ah, I don't know how many notebooks we, will, we use in a day. So even without, carefully considering it. You will agree to, with me that we speak more than we read and we write, or even we listen. We speak more, we speak. So, um, some people say, well, speaking is just uh, a means of conveying information or expressing our thoughts. Speaking is more than that. It's more than that. Sometimes um, we speak like when we talk about nonverbal communication. Because some people may think that it's only when we talk just the way I'm talking now that we are engaged in a in speaking. Now, when we when we are discussing with our friends, when we are discussing with our friends, discussing with our spouses, our colleagues in the office, we are actually uh, speaking. We call it conversation. We call it discussion. Uh, we call it chat, whatever we call it, we are actually engaged 
in speaking. We say hi, we actually engage in speaking, but we tend to take it for granted. Now, this uh, particular topic of uh, uh, speaking, somebody will say, ah, of what is it that she wants us to take away? For me, I expect that at the end of this study, this discussion, you should be able to understand the concept of speaking as an essential study skill. You understand why speaking is a, an essential study skill. Why is it essential for your study skill, for your study to be effective? And of course, you can now apply the components of speaking to your own uh, speech. Then, of course, you should be able to understand different types of uh, uh, speaking skills that you will encounter in this course. Yes, at the end of this discussion, because I'm quite excited that we all, we all, we are, we are part of this class. You see, when I say that this class is is always interactive, the how, a virtual class. I mean, online class, how can it be interactive? It's only when we are in the uh, conventional universities that you can say that a class is interactive. No, it depends. This class has always been interactive and it's, it, will, it will continue to be interactive. So, like I did say before, speaking is an essential study skill. It is very, very essential. Uh, sometimes you say, well, but uh, in most cases, I read on my own, I study on my own, uh, who am I uh, uh, speaking to? No, there is what you call a study group. Study group, then of course, um, uh, discussion uh, a group, our discussion forum. Uh, I'm yet to see more, many of you there. I hope that this week we will improve. So we will uh, we know that speaking is very very essential. So I uh, let's 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 get to the class activity two. Class activity two. This time now we are looking at uh, uh, speaking as an essential uh, study skill. So let's, let me see the charts before we go to this other one. Say thank you much for the commendation, okay. Aha, uh -huh. all right. Uh, we are still talking about the, uh, what we make our listening effective. You say audience awareness skill, all right. You no, know, being aware of your audience, all right. So, the being aware of your audience uh, will feature more in speaking because uh, if you don't know your audience, you will not select your uh, words uh, appropriately. You will not use the appropriate words. Uh, you will now see that sometimes you are talking out of point. Sometimes you are talking, uh, you are not communicating. So that is it. So, so much for listening. So we go to speaking now. Say, so mention five things that can make one an effective speaker. What are those things that you think that can make somebody an effective speaker? Mention it. Can mention one or two, so that let's 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 keep uh, mentioning them. Those things that can make one an effective uh, speaker. What are those things? Okay. All right. So know your subject matter, good command of vocabulary. Speaking should be interactive. Yes. Ability to tell a story. What kind of story? Folk story or what? You should you know. When you are answering, just answer it as if it's an exam. You will be a little bit explicit. I know it's chat. Just 
a little bit explicit. Say adequate preparation of the speech, correct. Someone who can capture the attention of the listener and retain their attention. Very good. He said, having a purpose or reason for speaking. If you don't have any reason or purpose and you are speaking, you will just be beating about the bush using simple and effective vocabularies. Very, very good, very important. If you are talking and you are using too much baboose language, in fact, by the time you look around, you are just you are just alone. People will walk away. You are wasting your time. He said, be audible, talk loud. There are some people, however, if you know that by your nature, you are not audible, please arrange for microphone. It's very, very important. Ability to make a good choice of words. Very good. Make your speech less complex. Is the same thing with that's using a, a, a less uh, say self-confidence. I like that. Ability to carry audience along. Wow. This class is wonderful. Yes, you say having boldness. Having boldness is the same. Having confidence. Carry your audience along. Then be yourself. Yes, be yourself. Um, I want to let, let, let me let me expatiate on this be yourself. It's very, very important. Sometimes we to imitate other people. Imitate other people. We begin to imitate how they how they talk. You will begin to you now discover that you cannot keep it for long, and so you will begin to fumble. Be yourself. Just don't 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 pretend to be who you are not. As you mean, I I, I come and I'm just trying to form for me that I know that well I'm a Nigerian, a local breed. And I'm just talking. You will be laughing over there. You say, ah, look at what exactly she, she's trying to do. Please oh, talk to us in the language we will understand. You say, know your purpose for speaking. Yes, someone has said, maintain eye contact. And yes, maintaining eye contact with the learner. Whether it is in a, a virtual classroom or not, maintaining eye say, avoid speaking what you do not know, repeating key points for your audience to understand the points you are making. You say be knowledgeable and intelligent. Yes, know what, know, be, know your onions, what you want to talk. Voice modulation. This one, you may not understand what this person is trying to say, but let me tell you, the voice modulation is that sometimes there are people that are staying far. So you need to talk, so that they will hear. And of course, sometimes you will know how to, uh, you cannot just be talking uh, high, high, high. You just go gently. Remember you, yourself, you are talking to an audience. You want to long, observe their reaction, observe, especially their facial expression, observe it. And that will help you your voice modulation. Then be versatile, empathic, emphatic, be emphatic. Then try to be brief. Do not bog your audience with long and boring speech. Do not bog them. Your content by familiarizing yourself with your content or material you want to talk about. Avoid big grammar. Hmm, say big grammar. I like this one, play. Avoid big grammar. Come down to our level. The level of your audience is very, very important. Knowing your audience. Knowing your audience is very, very important. If you don't know, if you don't know your audience, you will discover that you are just on your own. Pay attention to body language of your audience. That's what I said just now. Be observant. Observe their body language. Observe their facial expression. Observe their nonverbal, uh, their nonverbal uh, uh, expression. How they talk. Sometimes they can just look at themselves. No, just be observant, and that will tell you that either they are enjoying what you are saying or not. If they are not, then you will quickly adjust. I can only adjust 
if you topic, I say, stay on points. No digression, stay on points. Do not deviate, do not dumble here and there. Stay on point, remain focused. And he said, be attentive to necessary details of topic discussed with your audience. Be attentive. Then he said, practice, record yourself, and play before major speech. Very good. This one, you may take it that, oh, what is this person trying to say? It's very, very good, especially, especially if you are to uh, address a press conference, for instance, or you are to represent your boss in a meeting. Maybe your boss will say, oh, I have other engagements. Uh, please represent me there. I'm supposed to be the speaker. I'm supposed to deliver the keynote address. So you have to get prepared very well. Even if you are the one that is going to deliver the keynote address, do not take anything for granted. Say, oh, I mean, uh, I'm on a, it's, it's a familiar thing. Uh, maybe prize giving day, maybe convocation, maybe it's a, a conference, and the society uh, association has called you to be to deliver the keynote address. Do not take anything for granted. Be adequately prepared. That is, in a nutshell, that is what Aminu uh, is telling us. Aminu is telling us whatever you have to be adequately prepared. That's what they say, practice, record yourself, and replay before major speech. Then he said, a tumor, again says, listen to other people as they speak, not just you doing all the thing by yourself, with you. No one knows it all. That is exactly what Jim Atuma is telling us. No one knows it all. Do not say that I know it all. I mean, what is it? What is there? What is it? That, what is it that this person is talking about that I have to listen to him? Uh, no, I, I, I know it all. Listen. Make it interactive. Listen. Learn from others. That is exactly what he's saying. Learn from others. You don't know it all. Even if you know it 80%, Add the 20% from other people's uh, knowledge. It's, it, 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 there's no harm in that. And he said, try to avoid mannerism. Ha. Aminu says, try to avoid mannerism. There are some mannerism, bad mannerism. You know, in um, communication, uh, that is, you just be making some signs, some yeah, yeah, man. Uh, okay, uh, you got what, you, you 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 get what I mean? No, those are minor reasons. Don't do that. It's only when you are chatting with your with your say your mates, eh, your 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 colleagues that you can say that. I mean, even your colleagues not your senior colleagues, those at the same level with you, your friends, it becomes, that is, you have your own language that you will use to chat, but not when you are addressing an audience. Eh? Like, uh, hey, say, you know, uh, as in, no, you use that when you are talking with your mates, with your mates, your age mates, maybe your, your old boys, when you meet in your old boys meeting, you bring back the memories. But when you are giving a speech, please, as much as possible, avoid all those mannerisms. We call them clinks, uh, clinch and all that. Then repeat key ideas or concepts. This better understanding. That is what we talked about here. Clarify. Talk about clarity. There is need for you to clarify. You know, you go over those points. Go over those points. 
especially if you are called as a specialist in a particular area, say for instance, um, AIDS, you are called to deliver a speech or to talk to a group of uh, people, women or men on the issue of AIDS. By the time you finish educating them, explaining to them how uh, how uh, how uh, one uh, one is like uh, uh, what to do not to expose themselves to uh, AIDS, then the things to do and all that. Let me even use the one that is trending now, the current COVID nineteen now. Uh, they talk about wash your hands. Uh, when you want to sleep like this and all that, there is need for you to repeat the key ideas or concepts. And that is why you see that at any point in time, the issue of COVID-19 is discussed. The discussants, especially the medical personnel, they will go back, recap, emphasize, uh, explain just to make sure that the point sticks, that the point sticks. So they recap it. That is exactly what uh, Shegun Adeyomo is, uh, is telling us. It's a very solid point. And you discover that when those key ideas are repeated, it has a way of internalizing. It has a way of internalizing. In a, a meeting, we call them uh, or the, the bullets. You know, you just sieve them out, sieve them out. Highlights of the decision, decision extract. So you sieve them that even when the person, someone is in a hurry, looks at those key ideas, oh, the person will remember even without reading the entire text so the person understands that's exactly what he's saying and i quite agree with him i quite agree with him he has a point there he has a point there let the answers keep coming let's keep coming it's not it's not exhausted yet we are we are many 82 of us uh, some it means that some people have not uh, answered if uh, some people are not uh, contributing, I, I, may, I may exit and, and call their names to answer because I want to believe that as you are making this contribution, for adventure question comes in exam, you will be, you, you will be, you will be at home, you will be at home. As you mean, there are like five questions and this is one of them. Oh, at least you know that you are not going to get zero. You, have, you already you are already sure of the one that you can answer. That is the reason why I always like everybody to be part of this life class. It's life class. It's life class. So let's make it lively. Let's make it interactive. So more contributions, more contributions. And so, if we say, if we say that. Um, For us to be effective a speaker, if you look at if you look at this slide, you will discover some people are listening, paying rapt attention, but there is one, this one at the center. We don't know whether the if you, if you are seeing the slide very well, the picture is <laughs> is just using her hand to support her head. Maybe is she sick or he's sick? Maybe this person is sick. Maybe this person is tired. Uh, I don't want to say the person is on drug. The person is on medication. <laughs> Maybe this person is on medication. Maybe the person is sick. Maybe the person is absent-minded. Can you see it? And I want you to look at this one. It's coming closer. I want to understand what's the speaker is trying to explain. 
and this other person is attentive, rapt attention, is listening. And this person that is close to the speaker is, for lack of words, let me say, in a world of his or her own. You can see it, you can see the hands, supporting the hands. That is the posture that tells this learner or student uh, is absent-minded. In our conventional university, if I see a student that is seated like this, the first thing I do, I will take a break and find out if all is well. If all is well. Because the posture tells you that, ah, I'm in this class, so I'm just in this class. Uh, if I have my choice, uh, if I have my choice, I will just walk away. If I have my choice, uh, if at all, oh, either that the, the speaker is boring, is boring him. It might just be that he's held you. It might just be that the speaker is boring, he's bored. He's bored. Maybe the speaker is using uh, uh, the language that he does not understand. Should we even say that the speaker is uh, talking, uh, speaking in, in, uh, in his, his or her native uh, dialect? And so he's not enjoying it, he's not enjoying it. And out of sheer respect, he's just there. Say, ah, let's let him talk. Uh, he say, physiological disturbed. Hmm, man, your screen is not showing. Okay. Are you sure? Okay. Uh, if it, when you start seeing it, just let me know because I'm sharing my screen, sharing it now. I'm sharing it, maybe depending on where you are. Depending on where you are. Is it not still showing? It's showing now, all right. So when you're not seeing it, it is because uh, I'm reading the chart, so it's covering it, okay? All right, so I'm glad you are seeing it now. You are seeing the, the slide now. So there are, in this slide, you can see them. This other person is standing, stretching, uh, trying to list it. This one is seated down. And if you look closely, the one seated is, there is a biro, is trying to jot something down. But the one that is sitting down is not writing anything. He's just supporting his head like this, supporting his head like this, wondering, praying, where will this, where will this talk end? Ah, this speaker, I just prayed to finish talking. Ah, if I leave, I'm rude. You can, it's pure absent-mindedness, pure absent-mindedness. So when somebody is speaking, please pay attention. Pay attention. Pay attention. You will, you will understand what the person is saying. All right. Oh, Kim Aroke. He says, "Oh, maybe, he's, maybe he's feeling depressed." Oh my God. Chivuzo says, uh, "Imbibe some sense of humor when speaking or making presentation where appropriate." Yes, I agree with you. I agree with you. Sometimes. You need to introduce what we call comic relief. If you observe the facial expression of your audience, maybe they're looking agitated. They're looking too serious for your liking. Just say something. We call it comic relief. They will all discover that the atmosphere changes. I do that a lot. In the conventional university, I do that a lot. And when you do that, sometimes you will not discover that, ah, huh, just that a second or a minute laughter or smile, it means a lot to some people. So I agree with you. It's, it's not a serious business all the time. It's not serious business all the time. So what makes the listener body language change and shed more light on that, you see? Uh, please, ma, some of us can't 
find TMA position. We are not, we are not, we are not dealing, or we are not uh, talking about TMA now. You see, it's one of the things we are talking about. I'm not sure you are even attentive to the, to the lecture. You are not attentive. You, are, you have divided attention. Uh, should we say it's absent-minded? You are, you are thinking of TM. You are talking about yeah, listening to the lecture. Your man has gone to TMA. Even when I said that we will talk about TMA later, you couldn't wait. You're talking about TMA. The TMA, assuming that a question like this comes, is one of the questions that you are going to deal with in your TMA. Wouldn't you have lost something? So there are many ways we display uh, absent-mindedness, uh, lack of interest. Uh, this talk is boring. No, calm down, calm down. We will get to TMA. Yes, we will get to TMA because I know that it's part of the assessment, part of the assessment. And will agree with me that if I come if I come to, if I come for as a facilitator and I talk, read the course material for the one hour, and I say, all right, see you next week, it will be very boring. So when we say that the class should be interactive, let's make it interactive. So is there any question? If you have any question, you can send it via chat. Um, okay, it could be anxiety. Yes, this other person is giving good examples so the listener can reflect and can use these examples to get back on track. Yes, but what are the speaking skills? The speaking skills. The speaking skills, if you followed the contributions that the other class members made, the speaking skills that you should know uh, the topic. It should be the master. So, okay, the speaker observe to what makes the listening, um, should be observed to what makes the uh, body language of the listener and also try to listen, listen to their mood. No, you don't listen to mood now. You don't listen to the mood. That comes to what we are saying, lexis and structure. There is no way you can listen to mood. You observe mood. If like the person that we, we are looking at here, it is the mood that we are observing. Uh, we are not listening to the mood. You observe it. How is the mood? Is the mood cheerful? Is the mood melancholy? Is the mood sad? Is it happy? You observe it. You don't listen to the mood because the mood does not, it does not speak. The mood does not speak. It's a non-verbal uh, way of communication. Someone's mood. If I'm happy, my mood will show. If I'm sad, my mood will show. So mood is not what you listen to. You observe it. You talked about uh, speaking skills. Speaking skills, the last person that said, you must practice, jot down notes. You must practice, you know your, your, your audience, make sure you, you choose your words appropriately. Do not use the boss. The speaker should ask questions to ensure the audience are following. Very, very key. This is very, very correct. You must ask questions. If I had talked now and take it for granted that you listen, you followed, I would be, I, I, I would just have maybe let me use the word deceived myself because I have no way of assessing you. So, like this chat that you are sending now. It's a feedback mechanism. It's a feedback mechanism. That's what we call it in communication. And of course, in uh, speaking and listening. It's feedback. You are feeding me back. And it's a way of assessing yourself too. It's a way of assessing yourself. 
how much you understood the topic, how much you understood what we've been discussing since. And so um, it said ability to capture the attention or interest of yes. That is one of the skills again too. I, I want you when others uh, send chat like this, the reason why we are sending chat is that so that you will see it, you will see it, then when I'm answering it, you also benefit. If you are not carrying your audience along, it can be quite frustrating. Have you ever witnessed a situation where, let me say, especially during uh, political rallies, you are addressing a gathering, and before you know it, you will look around, they are living one by one, one after the other, one after the other. And before you know it, probably you alone or you and your few faithfuls. It can be quite frustrating, very, very. So ability to capture the attention or interest of your audience. And that's where you now discover that. One of the skills of a, an, a, 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 an effective speaker, you must make you, you must make your, your you must make it uh, lively. You must make it lively. He said they will even trust us. <laughs> this is a serious one. Yes, yeah, so they might even trust us at you. They might even throw uh, pure water. You know that's such as pure water. They will use it to stone you. If it is a uh, uh, tissue, it is stone. At least you are being stoned. Whether it is the real stone or, or anything, they will use it to stone you because then you, what you are saying is boring. You are not communicating. They will say, ah, please, uh, we don't want to hear. That is a way that they can tell you that they are not interested. They are not interested. Uh, they are not interested in what you are saying. It's not just only a uh, political party. So sometimes even you are just addressing a gathering. Uh, especially where you have, uh, it is predominantly youth. They are the one that can do that. Adults may not stone you. They will just walk away. That is the language you understand. They will walk away. You're on your own. Uh -huh. So it is, it is like that. Yeah, what time is our lecture on such day and Sunday? We don't have GST 707 does not hold such days and Sundays. No. It's only on Wednesday. That's when GST 707 holds. No Saturday, no Sundays. Can I say that the speaking skills are those things we do or practice as effective speaker? Yes. Yes. That is that is why. Like the other people that contributed, they say, okay, you practice, then you uh, record yourself, play it back, and all that. And he say, and so, like those of you that joined us, and uh, you met us when we already started. Um, sometimes uh, I like to start early so that we'll be able to cover enough uh, uh, ground because. Uh, interesting topics like this, uh, you will agree with me that uh, one hour is enough, but uh, not quite, um, not quite enough. But that is our the time that is allocated uh, to us. So, uh, if you are free, uh, Wednesday next week, try and join. And uh, I don't know what has happened to our captain. Captain of our class, Ali, you, Ali, you, you are missing today. I, I, I don't know. I hope you people are interacting via the, uh, the WhatsApp. Uh, so I, I hope it is well with him. So I, let's um. Okay. Let's take our exit. So 
um, till this time, till same time next week. Please read. Yeah, for those of you that talked about, that, that asked about a TMA, TMA uh, there is, um, if you have not, if you have not, uh, uh, there is this thing that is attached to TMA. I am not in full, I'm not in control of the TMA. No, I am not. The learning content management, that is the directorate, they are in control and they try to put some embargo. There are things you are expected to do. So when you click and in the TMA, you cannot assess it. Find out why you are being denied access. That will be the best way because if I tell you, oh, it's because of this, because of this, I will misleading you because I, I am not, I'm not in control of that. So it is not always good to give wrong uh, information. But if you try to assess your TMA, whether TMA one, two, three, and you are having challenge, just call, uh, get in touch with the directorates. They will always, they're always there to assist. That is why they are there. But if you have tried and tried and you cannot, you may send me uh, a mail and I will help you uh, find out how you can sort it out because it is part of your, part of the assessment that you must fulfill. So same time next week, I wish you all the best.